Good day and welcome. My name is Amarenska and today I will be doing a quick review of The Magicians by Love Grossman. This book is a retelling of the Chronicles of Narnia but with a coming of age type of uh, twist to it and also the characters are between I believe 18 and 22 or 23 years old because this starts off with an entrance exam to the magical school of break bills for Quentin and some other people and well we follow Quentin's story. He is kind of depressed or extremely sad and unhappy in his life. He is also one of the smartest of the smart kids in, I believe he lived in the Bronx, but I'm not sure. And he gets into break bills and magic school, so magic turns out to be real. He also has been, since years and years, obsessed with the Fillory books, which is the Chronicles of Narnia analog in this world. and. Instead of having the four Pevensey children, the uh, Fillory books have five uh, kids in them. And these books, I believe, have about six or seven characters. But we start off at a magic school in which uh, the people learn how to control magic. And I think that is why it is compared to Harry Potter so much, because magic school... But this did not feel like a Harry Potter for adults. It is how it was sell to me in the uh, sold to me in the first place. And I don't regret it because the plot in and of itself sounded very interesting to me. But it is sold as Harry Potter for adults even though it doesn't feel like Harry Potter at all. It it feels like an adult depressed sad version of the Chronicles of Narnia more so than Harry Potter. And in this book specifically, we have a, a book that tells the education of magic, which is supposed to take uh, five years, but for several of the main characters, it only takes four. They skip like almost a year, something like that, because they are so incredibly smart. I enjoy that point because we have like very smart characters. All the characters in this uh, school are extremely smart. And I feel like which uh, one thing that's specifically mentioned in book two is that our main character Quentin has Asperger's syndrome. Even though I did not really necessarily feel like that it was he wasn't written that way in this book. And I will come down in my review of the second book at why I felt like it was kind of a disrespectful to autistic people kind of writing. Because it also happens in the book that the word autistically is used as like an adjective. Which is how do you even act autistically? That does not make sense. And I find it kind of rude and insensitive to people who actually have autism, that you use it as an adjective, as if you can act that way when you're not. I get it, people who don't have autism see people act, uh, with autism sometimes act strange and weird and sometimes even obsessed with certain topics. That is what it could have described, but it's still not right because like autism is something you struggle with your entire life. Um, but except for that and the fact that Love Grossman got Old Middle German or Old Middle High German more specifically and Middle Dutch mixed up more than once in this book. And there was one more little thing that's not as important that that was kind of like why didn't you do your research like Old Middle High or Middle High Dutch does not exist, has never existed. That's a reference to Middle High German. Because High German still does exist. But it's modern High German. And Middle High German was spoken in the higher parts of Germany in the Middle Ages. Maybe a little bit after that. And the old old German, old high German was spoken like before the Middle Ages. So it's just a geographical error. But it was kind of annoying, especially since the magic education focuses so much on languages in this book. 
you would have thought that Love Grossman would have gotten that one right. But I liked way more things than I disliked in this book. I like the writing style. I like the feel. It's more of a dark, looming type of magical feel. You still have a little bit of that whimsy that middle grades have, that it feels very light and magical and fun. But the light and fun has changed for like unhappiness, sadness, darkness, because some dark shit happens in those books. And I, I definitely recognize like a lot of Narnia references from the rings and the pools in The Magician's Nephew to literally the lion and the witch from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. It's not literally translated, of course, everything has been given a twist. And I have to say that when I was reading this, I thought more and more, oh, this seems like, like an adult uh, retelling with slightly unlikable characters that are very smart and depressed and sad, which it is. And normally I really dislike, or yeah, I should, would say I normally really dislike retellings, which is not really the case. I am not a fan of retellings. They usually don't click with me, but this one did. Like I said, writing style, characters, I think the characters are actually written and developed pretty well, especially Quentin, who is the main character in here, but the other ones too. I think the world building was nice since we, since we start in the USA on Earth. There is not really a lot to build, only the school break builds had to be built up. And the only difference be uh, between a normal boarding school and this one is that it was two months behind and there was another type of game there that was not your regular old school games like baseball and basketball and that kind of stuff. Volleyball? No, it, it was welters. I still don't know the rules because the characters don't know the rules for like 60% of the time. And when they discover it, it's not really explained anyway. But like the first half or maybe even longer takes place at school and then the characters discover the buttons to get into Fillory and discover it was real, so they do. And they just go there without any proper reason for it, I think. Which was kind of strange, but it was also kind of fun because they were in the Netherlands, which is the in-between world. The world with the pools and the trees in the Chronicles of Narnia. And then they go into Fillory and one person tries it, it's summer, he comes back, says it's beautiful weather and then when they come back it's freezing and extremely cold, which is really funny because they were like, like, shall we get back to get our coats and cloaks and stuff to keep warm? But they were like, well another 50 years could have passed in this world here if we do that, so let's just go on and they are all wet in the freezing weather. And then we get like a sort of the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe story. Which was extremely fun. It had nice twists. Aslan had a nice twist of two goats to it instead of one big lion. Even though one of the two goats was somehow missing. And we have like a lamp post growing in the Chronicles of Narnia. And that were clock trees in these books and they come back every book which is fun like it's it's little hints you can see what has changed and usually what it is inspired of what i also like is this book has like references to older languages and all uh, philosophical things but also literary things there were, were a couple of harry potter references in here that are really well done they are very subtle but if you have read and analyzed books a little bit more or just if you're very keeping your eyes out on them you recognize them and I, I find that always fun I find it fun when a book is analyzable when you can um, recognize the things that are taken from other books that's probably why I like these books so much more than your standard old YA retelling because usually that's a story that is retold either in another time or like with other characters or like one type of thing like the princess and the prince are changed into two princesses that kind of stuff but this is just like a lot of things have gotten their own twist 
and I really liked seeing it. And it was really fun. I don't have a lot more about this book to say, uh, but I have to say thank you for watching. Like if you like this video, subscribe if you want to. Thank you for watching and on to the